I have recently had the chance to test out a chain of my interphalangeal joints, as well as a modified version I made for the MCP joint. So this is going to give me the opportunity to go into a little bit more detail on the joint and show how it all goes together. But before I get into that, I just want to quickly remind you guys about my Patreon page, where I post project updates and send out my Nilheim Mechatronics sticker packs. Your support really helps to keep me making these videos and working on my projects, so I really do appreciate any and all pledges that you guys make. It helped me to keep working on these projects and keeping everything open source and free. So I really do appreciate everything you guys do for me. So the way this prototype works is that there's a sensor in each joint of this finger model, which is a very slim rotary potentiometer. In this current design, the potentiometer is wired into the circuit board of a standard MG90S servo in the place of its original sensor. So this means that instead of the servo checking the position of its final gear to work out its own position, it checks the actual joint angle in the finger, which eliminates a ton of accuracy issues that my original design had. The actual actuation of the joints is achieved with control wire running through PTFE tubing, and a pulley system transfers the control wire throughout the whole finger without having to have tubing entering each finger segment like the original design had. This will mean that I can have a much greater proportion of the control wire in flexed, inflexible channels, which should help to reduce the excessive wiggle room that the original design had. In this prototype, I'm testing the motion just by twiddling knobs on my servo tester that I made a few videos back, but I think that the motion looks pretty natural even at that. So to examine a few of these joints in greater detail, starting at the new MCP flexion joint, I had a unique challenge because of my joint design, which already has two pulleys which carry the control wire for the proximal and distal IP joints. So with the additional space I had due to the MCP joint being a bit fatter, I reshaped the housing for the integrated potentiometer to also function as a pulley, so it goes together in the same way with some little pins to align it, although this does leave a thin gap where the wire should run, so I'm going to redesign it to have a complete pulley surface printed on one of the sides. So this pulley slash potentiometer combo component connects to an adapter which is part of the MCP joint, but I'm still developing that and I'll be updating you on it soon. So the interphalangeal joints were largely unchanged from the first video, but now that I'm a little bit more comfortable with them, I can show you how they go together. Having said that, it was very fiddly to put together, so the one I'm showing you here is not part of the actual prototype that I built. So the first task is to solder the rotary sensors, and for that you'll need some really thin wire. Um, the wire I'm using in this video is 24 AWG, but I still think it's a little bit too thick. So the potentiometers that I started out using were the same type of Bonds potentiometer that I used in my control glove, um, but it looks like there's an updated version on RS now, which has some minor differences. I'll put the product number for both sensors in the description, um, but it does look like the new ones may be a very slightly better build quality. So once the potentiometers have been soldered, you can put them in the little potentiometer housing um, and make sure the wire exits through the open end of the housing. The next layer is the thin connector pieces, so they are really thin, but they're thick enough in the planes that matter for the forces that they're going to experience in flexion or extension of the hand, so I think it's not a problem, especially if it was going to be printed in something a little bit more durable. But these components also set the position of the potentiometer via a little central rod, um, which needs to go in at this stage too. This little rod is best printed flat face down, but there is also a screw which will go through the middle and greatly increases strength. You can then put on the pulleys. Uh, one of these will need to be the actuating pulley. The actuating pulleys have a flat face on the inside to transfer the force, whereas the other type of pulley is fully round on the inside and can rotate freely. On the actuating pulley, insert your cable, um, bend the ends and try to get it as flat as possible. Um, I'm using what I believe is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene fishing line, but I think it's a little bit too thick. It is however unbelievably strong, so I think I can quite safely go a lot thinner. You can then put the pulleys on and put the bearings in the bearing holder components. You can then complete the central axis to lock everything together. The screw, which in this instance is an MG90S housing screw, goes straight through the short end and central rod and into the long end. 
component. The reason there's a short and long end is because one half of the central axis component is a little bit longer. And then the final step is to use some half millimetre wire to seal it all together. Um, I do think that screws would be a better choice, but I need to source some thin enough screws um, which will keep the weight as low as it is at the minute. Um, and I also do like having the option of using wire, just for those of us who have a very low budget. Having this wire holding everything together is also intended to act as a sort of strain relief for the wires, but annoyingly the control wire from the potentiometers was slightly too thick to fit between the construction wire. Um, so all that means is that I need to find some thinner, more suitable wire. Because in my original prototype that wasn't actually an issue because the wire was thin enough. And then the rest of the thing segments go together in the exact same way, although it should be noted that the proximal phalanx, which is the first finger segment, has bearings and potentiometers on both ends. So it's like a, a double-ended segment. So at the moment to test out this prototype I'm just using rewired MG90S servos but I would like to use the MCP actuator to drive at least one of the joint segments and I'm not sure how the actuators will look um, when they're integrated into the forearm in the final thing by which I mean I'm not sure if I'm going to rearrange the servos again to fit them better in the forearm or just stick with the standard form factor. I do think this has been a successful experiment and it's nice to see something with a few degrees of freedom like this working um, but there's still a lot of room for improvement on this design, I think, like thinner control wire, as I mentioned. Um, the pulleys need to be able to turn a bit smoother, I would say, and I need some kind of cable management system for this design. Although I do think that can be something that will be integrated into the shell components, um, however I decide to build those. Um, the material that I'm using as well, um, I think I could save myself a lot of hassle by using ABS. Um, that would definitely make those pulleys turn a little bit smoother uh, without having to make any major design modifications. But I do kind of avoid using ABS just because it takes a little bit more setting up and uh, it's more likely to fail. I also feel like the fumes give me a bit of a headache. But what would be really great for this project would be an SLA resin printer. So I'm going to have to see about acquiring one of those somehow. Now I think because of the early stage of this project, um, rather than give you a bundle of STL files to print off, I'm just going to upload the CAD files and you can have a look at those. I'll post a link to my GitHub repository where you can find all the files and I'll also have a link to my new Discord server. So check those out if you're interested, come and say hello on my Discord server and check out my Patreon page if you're interested in getting some Nilheim Megatronic stickers. So as always a really big thank you to my patrons and thanks to everyone else who watches these videos. I've got a bit of a learning curve ahead of me trying to work out the ins and outs of SLA printing which I think I'm going to be using from this point forward. So for the next few videos I'm going to be looking into um, biomechanics and anatomy of real hands and trying to work out what kinds of mechanisms I might be using in my own design and looking at current designs as well. So I hope that you'll stay tuned for those videos. I'll see you all in the next video.